Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we're here tonight in response to your faithfulness, O oh God. Lord, who can measure your faithfulness, O oh Lord God? Lord, many of us here, Lord, know the times when we failed and we weren't faithful, yet you continue to be faithful to us, O oh God. We love you, Lord Jesus. Father, we're looking to you tonight, O oh God, to speak to our hearts, to minister to our hearts, O oh Lord God, so that, Lord, we would be better followers of Christ, O oh God, that we could draw nearer to you, Lord God. We're here, Father, to meet with you. And you're so good, Lord, to be faithful to meet with us, Father. Continue to be with us in this meeting as we move forward, O oh God. We pray, God, that you would speak to our hearts as we open up your word as well. And we ask all of these things in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen, amen. Let's give the Lord one more praise offering. And Amen. Well, this is a, it's a prayer meeting. There are a lot of things uh, that we have asked the Lord for this year as the year is coming uh, to a close. And uh, we all have testimonies about answered prayers. How many of you have testimony about how God has answered your prayers this year? And he has brought about his glory. There's so many things that I can think of, of prayers that we prayed here on Tuesday night and people that were in situations either financially or physically. We've had some miraculous healings that God has done and a lot of glory has gone to his name and that continues and I thank God for that. But have you ever received an answer to prayer that you forgot that you prayed? I want to talk about something like that from the very Christmas story. Before the angel Gabriel appeared to Mary to let her know about the astounding news that God had chosen her out of all the women who were virgins in Israel, he chose her. She wasn't from an important family. She did have the right lineage, though. But before the angel Gabriel visited Mary, he visited someone named Zechariah. And I'm going to read to you that story in Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 8. It says like this, Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. You know, as I was reading this, this time around, uh, something became clear to me is that God remembers prayers that you have forgotten. And the reason I say that is because Zechariah, that couldn't have been his prayer now because we read in verse 18 of Luke chapter 1, the following, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Obviously, Zechariah wasn't asking for, for, uh, to God for a child in his old age. This is a prayer that he had prayed, obviously, quite a while ago. His wife was well along in years. Um, as much as I love my children, I, at my age, will not ask God for another child. <laughs> but knowing that he was well on in years... This is something that shocked him. And he even asked the angel, how can this be? This is impossible. I am well on in years. Zechariah had not asked right then and there. This is something that he had asked in the past. 
and that Elizabeth, being barren, had asked. And I'm sure they felt that God had not answered that prayer, and they remained faithful to the Lord. How many know that no matter what we pray and what we think God should answer, we remain faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? Because God knows everything, and he knows what's best. But I want to let you know something that I found out, that your prayers don't have an expiration date. Sometimes we treat prayers like a milk carton, you know, when you look at it and it says, you know, used by a certain date. And, you know, if you don't, if you haven't used it by that date or it says sell, sell by a certain date, I learned that that doesn't mean it goes rotten right away, but you have, you're getting close and we throw out the milk. But you don't do that with prayers. They're not expired. They don't become uh, discarded. Revelation 5.8 tells us and gives us a glimpse of what happens to our prayers. It says this, And when he took the scroll, meaning Jesus, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they held gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Prayers from the heart that are heartfelt, they're powerful, they're effective, and they are long-lasting. You know, I've, uh, I've been reminded um, about prayers that I had prayed, and you know how you pray for a season and when it, it, you don't see an answer right away? Sometimes you stop praying for another season. And you think that, you know, God has moved on and you have moved on. And then God brings an answer to that prayer that you prayed during that season. Has anybody besides me uh, uh, have had that experience with God? Raise your hand if you've had that experience. It's pretty awesome. I remember I was praying, one of the many that I can remember, I was praying for this couple who they uh, they were separated and they were getting a divorce. And I was praying every day that that wouldn't happen. And uh, it didn't look good. I mean, there was, we had spoken to them. My wife and I went to visit, and um, they were just not having it. But we kept praying. But then after a while, you know, I moved on, and there were other needs. And about two years later, they wanted to talk again. And God had done something. And there we were sitting with them, and now they wanted to make things right. And I was reminded, you forgot. The Lord saying to me, you forgot about this, but I didn't. And here's your answer to the prayer that you prayed two years ago. And uh, I, I so thank the Lord that we can have the confidence that when we pray, It's ever before the Lord. When it's a prayer from our heart, how many say amen? So God remembers prayers that we ourselves have forgotten. Isn't that awesome? Here's something else that I get from this scripture, that there's no such thing as a wasted or forgotten prayer when it's from your heart. You know, that's as opposed to a ritualistic prayer. Those don't usually go past the ceiling. Or prayers without faith. Sometimes we pray um, to pray, but we don't pray with faith, and that doesn't work either. But when you pray from your heart, there is no waste there, and there is no forgotten prayer. Because prayer is more than we think that it is. Prayer has a purpose. First of all, prayer is primarily for the purpose of creating intimacy between us and our God. It's how we talk to God. It's how we commune with his spirit, our spirit communing with his spirit. That happens when we pray from our heart, not from our head. We commune with the Lord. He, he uh, makes him, his presence known as we pray. It's conversations with God. I know a lot of people mainly use prayers to request things from God, and that's Okay, he tells us that we can ask for whatever it is that's on our heart. But prayer is more than that. How many know that? 
Prayer is how we talk to God. I need to speak to God every day. Before I start my day, I, 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 want, I want to connect with him. I want to get counsel from him. I want him to speak to my heart. I want him to tell me if I'm heading the right way or the wrong way. I, I, I want to walk uprightly before the Lord, and that happens in conversations with him. So prayer is for the purpose of creating intimacy with our God. It's also for the purpose of keeping us before the throne of grace. You know, one of the things that I love about when I'm in a season of praying for a certain thing, I'm, I'm always in seasons, and when someone's in need here that I know, I go into prayer for that thing, not only, uh, you know, every day, but throughout the day. And sometimes when I wake up in the night and God brings that person or that situation to my heart, I begin to pray that way is, in other words, constant prayer. But you know what that does? All that time, it keeps me at the throne of grace. All the needs, you know, the more needs you collect, not only your own, but the people you love and you care about, people that God has brought to you or to your mind. I, I, I pray that when God brings someone to your mind that you pray for them. I hope you're doing that. You know, when somebody comes to your mind, from that's the Lord. Right then and there, stop and pray wherever you are, right? Imagine if we all did that. There's a reason why God brings people to our hearts. And sometimes when it's really a burning thing and God brings someone to your heart and you say, I, I got to call them too. And then you realize, how did you know? You hear from the other, well, you didn't know. God knew. He's, he's amazing that way. We were talking before the service, uh, was talking with Pedro and how God just connects dots. And uh, we were talking about this one situation where one encounter led to another thing and that, that led to another thing and, and God's purpose. I mean, you can get dizzy trying to figure out how God works everything out, but all of that is done through prayer and through connection with God, and, and prayer keeps you at the throne of grace. What a better place to be. By the way, guess what? You never get in trouble. You never get in trouble at the throne of grace. The more time you spend there, the more time you spend out of trouble. Amen? Amen. And it's like this with us. You know, uh, sometimes when children grow up and move out of the house, um, some children, some older children only call their parents when they have a need. You ever heard of that? They don't call a check-in. They say, oh, Dad, I need some money, or, you know, that kind of thing. That implies that there wasn't a, a, a relationship there, right? And sometimes we, as the people of God, act like that. In other words, we don't talk with them, we don't check in with them, but when we have a need, hey, Abba, yeah, can, can you send me something? And, and that's, that's not how Jesus meant it to be. He didn't come down here and give his life for us all so that we can freely go into the presence of God for us just to go occasionally when we're in trouble. Amen? So praying for needs and, and having to keep on praying, like the Bible tells us, right? There's plenty of stories where God, Jesus taught us, pray and don't give up. Don't stop. Be like that widow who bothered that unjust judge. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Bother me. And because that's for us. It keeps me going to him. And prayers for the purpose of increasing your faith. As you see God answering, it increases your faith. As you consistently pray, it deepens your faith, and as your faith deepens, you see more answered prayer, and as you see more answered prayer, your faith goes even deeper. It's a, it's a wonderful cycle of getting you deeper and deeper into the heart of God and into uh, uh, the believing that when you pray, God hears and he answers. I, 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 I always have, I, I, a few weeks ago, I was speaking about the hope that we have in Christ. And as long as we're followers of Christ, and we're not living crazy, but we're living, you know, the best we can with the Holy Spirit helping us, staying in the Word, that no matter what situation comes, like right now, I'm facing some things that 
are serious, right? But my heart wants to get concerned. My heart wants to, and I pray, God, don't let me sin against you by, by having me worry, by letting me worry. I don't want to worry about this. That's why I run to his throne of grace. And then the Bible says, just like, you know, Ephesians 4 tells us in verses 6 and 7, to not worry about anything. Don't be anxious about everything. But in everything, how? By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the thing about it is this, that no matter how things look, oh man, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where it looked like that was it. Anybody else been in a situation, this is it. You're not getting out of this one. You're not squirming out of this one. But then God, but then God does what God does. And you can't explain it. You can't figure it out. And it just stuns you. And he's done that so many times in my life. I can't, I can't even begin to count. But I'm so thankful and it keeps my hope alive. Because no matter what I'm facing, but then there's God. God can do anything. And by the way, he made certain promises. And how many know that the promises of God are yes and amen? That means that he's not playing. If God said something, he's going to do it. How many say amen? amen. Absolutely. By the way, I was just reading about a church that doesn't say amen because that's not how we talk in, in regular life. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> amen means so be it. As God said it, let it be that way. I'm not getting rid of amen. And prayers for the purpose of showing everyone around you the goodness and the glory of God. When God answers prayer for you, people around you are blessed, believe it or not. 2 Corinthians 1, 10 and 11. The Apostle Paul is speaking here to the Christians in Corinth. And he says this. Apparently they were in some deadly danger. We don't know exactly what it is. But he says, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril. And he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. And we've experienced that here, right, when collectively on Tuesday nights we've prayed for somebody. Sometimes we brought somebody up that was facing a, a very difficult situation or a physical impossibility like our brother who had cancer stage four and they gave him... They were just trying to keep him alive through chemo, and God healed him completely. He's healed today. That happened. Here he came and gave testimony of that. And what do we do? It didn't stir your heart to give thanks to God. In fact, let's give thanks to God again for what he does. Amen? We've lived 2 Corinthians 1, 10 and 11, giving thanks to God for things that he has done among us. Amen? So prayer is for the purpose of speaking with God, of staying connected with God, of seeing him do things. I, I, I see things this way, and of course I have to uh, go to the Lord so that I can keep looking at things this way. When situations come my way, and they're always coming, you know how life is, I see it now as an opportunity to pray to see God work it out for his glory. Right? And I have to, but here's what happens. When you back away from the throne of grace, it's almost like your, your faith and your hope starts to diminish. That's why we, the, the Bible right, tells us, pray without. In other words, uh, what are you leaving the throne of grace for? I want to live from there. Right? I want to approach life from there so that at any moment, whatever comes up, I'm not far away from God and he's not far away from me. Amen? So prayer is for the glory of God, for our good. Amen? And Pedro, if you'd come, I just want to say one last thing here. That God goes above and beyond what you're asking when you pray. 
God goes above and beyond what you ask when you pray. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more that we might ask or think. Infinitely more than we might ask or think. Can anybody here testify by uplifted hand if God has done something for you and he gave you more and did it in a bigger way than you asked? Raise your hand and give glory to God. Wow, yes, absolutely. And I was thinking about the story with uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth. First of all, God answers our prayers in the perfect time. His timing is impeccable. It's perfect. It's, it's just amazing how God just has the right timing. He answered Zechariah and Elizabeth's prayer much later than when they had prayed, but it was the perfect time because he answered their prayer and Elizabeth got pregnant six months before the angel Gabriel announced to Mary that the Holy Spirit was going to come on her and she was going to conceive and that baby was going to be the Messiah, the Son of God. Because you see, God had a plan for the baby of Zechariah and Elizabeth too. So he timed it perfectly around the time when the Messiah was going to be born. So his timing is perfect. His answers are for your good. He answered Zechariah's and Elizabeth's prayer for their good. Listen to what Elizabeth said in Luke chapter 1, verses 24 and 25. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant. That means after the angel Gabriel told him that it would happen, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. This is what she says, verse 25. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. He does things for you. He loves you that much. It's not the whole story, but you are blessed by the answers that he brings. It's for you. It's to bless you. It's because he loves you. It's because he has heard your prayer. And you're important to him. And when you pray to him from your heart, there's no way he's not going to answer. But he has the perfect timing, you see. That's why you can't give up. Like Jesus says, pray and never give up. Because his answers to your prayers, he answers them in a greater and better way than you even asked, than you even thought of. And he answered Zechariah and Elizabeth's prayer in a greater way than they asked. They were asking for a baby. Elizabeth, Elizabeth was asking that even in her barren state, God would do a miracle and give them a child. Listen to Luke 1, verses 14 and 15. From what we read, He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. What? I just, I just asked for a baby. You mean he's not just going to be any old baby? No, they prayed for a child. And he says, I'll give you a child. But this child is going to make many people rejoice. And this child is going to be great in the sight of the Lord. You know, they asked for a child and they eventually forgot about their prayer, but God never forgot. And his plan was to bless their socks off and to bless the world as well. We're blessed by John the Baptist's life today as we read his story and encouraged by this incredible man of God. Jesus later went on to say in Matthew 11, 11 that out of all the people born of women, 
There was no one greater than John the Baptist. They were asking for a child, and they got John the Baptist. And he always answers your prayers for the greater good. He answers for your good, no doubt. I'm a living testimony of that. But he also answers your prayers for the greater good. He answered Zechariah's and Elizabeth's prayer for the greater good. Listen to verses 15 and 17 of Luke 1. He is never to take wine or ferment or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. God does the complete package. He hears your prayers. Are there prayers that you've prayed that you've forgotten about? Because you felt that God delayed? Well, hold on to your hats because you don't know when God's going to bring that to pass. He has surprised me so often. And you would think I'd get it, right? But because of all the things that, we're, that are before us and all the changing seasons, we pray something we forget, but little do we know that that heartfelt prayer is still before God in that bowl of incense that are the prayers of God's people. He doesn't forget one. He doesn't waste one tear as you pray before him. I believe he collects our tears. I believe our tears speak to him louder many times than our words. The Lord always has more in mind than we think. Because even when he answers personal prayers, he can bless many other people through how he answers you. I've spoken many times of different trials that my wife and I and our family have been through time when she got sick and I had gotten sick as well and I learned that uh, when I th went through my battle with cancer it opened doors for me of opportunity to, to minister on a different level with people who were going through the same thing because before I had experienced going through that trial I had prayed with people who were going through cancer, prayed for people, prayed over people. But now when they would come and I would tell them, I'm battling it too, let me pray for you, guess what? The prayer reached them in a different way. My words reached them in a different way. And then when God healed me, then everyone else was able to thank God and take courage for their situation. Because if God can do it for one person, how many know that God shows no favor? He loves us all the same. Of course, those that draw near to God, right, and are on the throne of grace, obviously you see more of God working in your life. If you're not paying attention and if you're not asking, the Bible says you don't have because you don't ask. But those that ask and remain around the throne of God see God move in amazing ways. And when he does, it's not just for you. It is for you. But he wants to bless everyone around you. That's why I love testimony nights. That's what testimonies are all about. The reason I love them is because from one life, and we had in Thanksgiving here three precious saints of God give their testimony. I was so uplifted. And I knew their testimony. <laughs> Well, you, you haven't heard it yet. I, I've blessed and I heard it, you know. But because it's so uplifting 
and it encourages your heart to keep going when you see God moving in somebody else's life. So I want to thank God today that he doesn't forget anything I asked him. I also thank God that he doesn't always give me everything I ask for. Because sometimes I ask incorrectly because I don't have the whole picture. And somehow or other, God, like in the picture with Zechariah and Elizabeth, somehow or other, he, he connects things. Like he says, okay, I'm going to bless you, Zechariah. I'm going to bless you, Elizabeth. But boy, if you just wait a little bit, I got something for you that is so going to bless you. But it's also going to bless the entire world for generations to come. Only God can do something like that. So I want to encourage you tonight. Whatever you pray for from your heart, know, first of all, that God hears it immediately. How many know that? He's not hard of hearing. He, his ear is inclined to us. Imagine us, right, as parents and how we love our children. Aren't our ears inclined to their cry? I could pick up when, when the boys were small, I could pick up their cry in a crowded playground. I knew when it was one of them screaming out. Even with other kids screaming, I, could, I knew their voice, and that's God. He, the Bible says he inclines his ear to hear the cries of his people. But it's not just a cry that goes up in the air and disappears. It stays with him. He keeps it. And he'll work it out according to his glorious plan for your life and for the life of people around you. I want to encourage you today before you pray to believe that God is right now listening. He's hearing me speak. I better speak what his word says. I dare not speak anything that the Lord has not said. But I'm telling you what he has said. And that's why you can have a lot of faith and a lot of trust in the words because they're his words. Amen? They're from the word of God. And God wants you to know that whatever you pray tonight, you may forget in a week or two, or he might give it to you tonight. Who knows? But he's not going to forget. Amen? I want us to take time in prayer. I want us to find prayer partners, men with men and women with women. Let's pray and ask for some specific things that we can have testimonies about when God answers those prayers. I want to hear testimonies from you. We'll have a testimony night. I want to have one after the new year, not too long after, where we just can hear from all of you what God has done in, as a result of prayer. And maybe as a result of prayer tonight, mark it down, the 19th of December, 2023. Amen. Let's go to prayer, and then afterwards we'll pray for the prayer cards that were handed out.